So in this problem, we're told a falling stone takes 0.33 seconds to travel past a window 2.2 meters tall. From what height above the top of the window did the stone fall? So the first thing you always want to do in kinematics problems is to draw what's going on. So we know we have a stone here, and we're going to drop it from a certain height. So imagine we drop it from here. It doesn't really matter. And so it's going to fall some distance. We're going to call this distance D. And then it's going to fall down, and we know it's going to fall past a 2.2 meter window. And the, the time it takes to travel this distance is 0.33 seconds. Okay, so I know we're going to be solving for this distance D. And the way we're going to do that is by splitting this problem into basically two kinematic problems. So I want you to imagine we're splitting this into two. So we're going to have kinematic variables for this one and this one. So let's think about this problem. So I know I'm going to be solving for the distance here. And so I'm going to need certain kinematic variables to plug in my kinematic equations in order to solve for D. So I always like to have my kinematic variables just written. So let's do that. So we have the distance. So we'll say question mark. We have uh, the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. So we have all these variables. And I know I'm going to need uh, three of them in order to solve for the distance D. So what I want to understand is which ones do we have and which ones are we going to need to solve for? Uh, are we going to need to solve for? So we know the initial velocity, since it's being dropped, is zero meters per second. So we already know one of them. That's good. And then acceleration, we also know. So acceleration is, you always write it as minus 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. So whenever you have a stone falling like this, or any falling problem for that matter, you use this acceleration. OK, great. So we have two variables. I know I need three. So am I going to be able to get the final velocity at the end of this interval, which would be here? Or am I going to be able to get time? So there's no way to find the time, so it's not going to be that one. There would be no way to get the time from this. So I'm going to need the velocity too. Now, how do I get the velocity? So I need the velocity right here. And if you think about it, the reason we split this into two is because I'm going to be able to solve for the velocity using this part of the problem, this information. So let's write a whole nother given. And we want to write out our variables, but for this problem. So we have delta y, which is this change in the y. We have v sub 0 v, a, and t. Now, uh, keep in mind, we're going to be solving for v. And the velocity here, what is it on this problem, in terms of this problem? So if you look, the velocity at the end of this interval is the velocity at the beginning of this interval. And that's the trick to this problem. You need to understand that the velocity at the end of this interval, which we need to find, is the same as the initial velocity in this interval, in this kinematic problem. So you basically split it into two. So we need to find v sub 0. And then once we get that, we can plug it in here and actually solve. So hopefully you understand that. But um, yeah, so uh, let's look. So we're going to need, uh, let's write down the variables that we're given. So we have minus 2.2 meters uh, for the delta y, because that's the change in the y. We have the time, 0.33 seconds. And then we also have acceleration, minus 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. Uh, so yeah, so we've got all this, and we don't know the final velocity, but we won't be needing it. And now we need to solve for the initial, the initial velocity. So let me zoom out a bit here. So the formula we're going to use here is one of the kinematic equations. Delta y equals v sub 0 plus t plus 1 half at squared. So this is probably the most common kinematic equation, and we're going to use it to solve for v sub 0. So plugging our stuff in. Minus 2.2 .2 equals v sub 0 times 0.33 plus 1 half times minus 9.8 times 0.33 squared. Cool. So what we're going to want to do is, let me simplify this a bit. So 0.33 v sub 0. This whole thing right here. So let me plug that in. 0 0.5 times minus 9.8 times 0.33 squared. It is minus... 0.53361. So what we can do is add it to the other side. So just add it to the other side. So it would be minus 2.2 plus that value right here. So you get minus 1.66639 equals 0.33 V sub 0. So divide this by 0.33. And you're going to get V sub 0 equals minus 5.05 meters per second.
So this would be the initial velocity of this problem, which is the final velocity in this problem. So that's exactly why we did it. So let me write that in there. So minus 5.5, 5.05, sorry, meters per second, meters per second. Um, and now what we want to solve is this one. So uh, we have the equation we're going to use for this one is another kinematic equation, which is v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times the distance, which in this case is d. So keep in mind this is displacement though. So we know the final velocity is minus 5.05 squared equals uh, v sub zero, which is just zero squared plus two times the acceleration minus 9.8 times d. So minus 5.05 squared, and then obviously you would just divide it by this. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so when you go ahead and do that, you'll find that d is equal to 1.30 meters, essentially. That's rounded, so 1.30 meters, that's gonna be the distance. So keep in mind, that's the distance above the window, at which is dropped. So this right here is gonna be your answer. So all we did in this problem was basically split it into two, and then we used the v sub zero in this problem to plug in as the v. So you just gotta understand that we can plug in variables from one to the other, as long as they make sense, which in this case, they were the same. So uh, yeah, this was your answer and hopefully this was useful.